It's the Q. Here is your host, Jeff Crick. Hi, Jeff Rick here with theCUBE. We are on the ground in Silicon Valley, actually in Santa Clara, just across from r and Intel's headquarters, really in the heart of Santa Clara, and Sil where the silicon is in Silicon Valley. And I'm joined here by my next guest, Tom Riley, CEO of Cloudera. Welcome. Hi, John, good to be here. Good, good to be in front of these racks of EMC and across from Intel. It's the internet, we're right here. This is the internet, everything comes right back here. Exactly, so we just had the panel discussion as part of the ACG Silicon Valley, big data, big money. You guys are right in the heart of it. This big data thing is real. It is real, that was a great panel. You know, what I loved about the panel discussion, what everyone was interested in is, what are the true business applications that are transforming industries? And you know, getting into that seemed to be what everyone wanted to hear. Yeah, well, I, and I think you know, Jeff Kelly has, has uh, presented in his kind of big data analysis that the big money is not necessarily in the vendors, but in these companies, old line, boring companies, putting this to work to make small incremental changes on really big numbers that equal big, big, Big money. Yeah, we're seeing our most advanced customers really transform their businesses and, and create hundreds, if not billions of dollars of opportunity for them. You know, if you think of uh, the whole automotive industry, now is uh, collecting data off of cars. Data streaming from cars and they're collecting that to offer, you know, better insights or better support and service around cars. So now it's, it's um, when you buy a car, your manufacturer knows so much more about you. Insurance companies, would love to get their hands on that data because now they can start giving insurance based on how you use your cars. Or if you think of uh, things you use only occasionally, like a boat or an RV, why do you pay for insurance for a year if you only use it for three days? So they're experimenting at how you do have a pay-per-use model. So the insurance industry is subtly changing. Healthcare, uh, we're working with healthcare providers who are sending patients home and censoring them and monitoring them remotely instead of down the hall in a hospital. Hospitals, that's when you get infections and uh, when you heal slowly because you're in an uncomfortable environment. They're finding they send you home, they monitor you remotely, fewer infections, you recover faster, you're happier with movies, you have your family around you. Every industry is just you know transforming around these big data use cases. Yeah, and it's interesting, you used the, the example of, of Tesla a number of times on the panel and really as being the biggest wearable device, although you got Trump, somebody said maybe an airplane is a bigger wearable yeah. device. But you know, you gave an example of really the way the car interacted with you based on data. And I thought it was interesting what the Facebook guy said is that if it's done well, it's magical. If it's done poorly, it's creepy. But, but your car is not really your transportation. It's a very different kind of relationship you have. Yeah, so I mean, I, I'm a proud owner of a Tesla, and it's changed my driving experience. So you think of a wearable as you know something that you know tracks your steps, right? Or it may be you know monitoring your heart rate. Well, actually, the auto is the world's largest wearable. It's I listen to my music, I have my phone calls done through there, I have a GPS on there, and now it's tracking my driving habits. Uh, in the Tesla, when I recently entered it actually asked me if I was commuting home, because if I was, it noticed that there was congestion on my typical route, and it had an alternate route for me to save me 20 minutes. That is like a game-changing experience in a car. And I realized, wow, data is changing the car experience, and it's improving my life, and then that builds loyalty. I mean, I, my wife wants a Tesla now. Yeah, and, and that wasn't even, that's not even a giant data set example for it to, to yield that answer for you. Right. Well, no, that's not necessarily true. For it to know congestion, it has to look at all the cars that are on. You know, it's probably they have a partnership with Waze or Google to get that data. But that's a big data set. And yeah. of course, they have to have the maps and the roads to anticipate alternate routes. So to calculate that from the time I got in my car, put my foot on the brake, and it, it comes up with an alternate route, that's a big data yeah, problem. Yeah. It's pretty cool. Now, the other interesting thing that came in the panel is somebody asked, what industry is not going to be disrupted? <laughs> And you guys are all quiet as church bounces up there. I mean, everything is being transformed. And you gave a number of examples of kind of flyover country. I think we talked about agriculture and farms and self-driving um, tractors and a whole bunch of stuff. I mean, this is real and it's happening now. Yeah, so uh, you know, we were asked by the audience, you know, what's an industry that won't be disrupted? And we couldn't think of one until one of the panelists said, well, maybe acting. And then I realized acting is being disrupted by big data because we're now capturing all the data and all the ticket sales and attributing them to actors. And so actors' personal you know, ability to charge for doing movies is gonna be driven by data. 
So it is changing the acting world. Yeah, it's amazing. Well, Tom, thanks for stopping by. I know you got a long drive home in the car. Um, so I appreciate you taking a few minutes. Thank you, John. It was a good time. All right. So I'm Jeff Frick. We're on the ground in Silicon Valley uh, at the ACG Silicon Valley. Big day to making big money. I'm Jeff Frick. You're watching theCUBE. See you next time.